Welcome to History and Lowell. I'm Maritza Grooms. I'm here with three of my faves, my personal professor, Bob Foran, and two special guests today. We have Krista Brown of the Free Soil Arts Collective. Hello. Hello. <laughs> and Miss Masada Jones of the Kindred Project. Hey, hey. Hey, hey. So today we're going to be talking about historical preservation, really, is what we're talking about in a project that the two of you have been working on for some time. Uh, Hidden Plain Sight, that's what it's called. So it's a storytelling project where um, Masada and myself have been interviewing black people either from Lowell or people who lived in Lowell or worked in Lowell at some time. Um, so we're working on compiling the interviews. They'll be publishing a book in December of this year. And then um, over the next couple of years, be turned into a play in collaboration with Merrimack Repertory Theater. That's so exciting. Yeah. We applied for a grant through the Greater Lowell Community Foundation through their, I think it's called the Racial Equity Fund. And it's just been a thing. It's come up um, in other projects we've had among friend groups that the black experience in Lowell is just not talked about. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it's frustrating, it's annoying, but I also was kind of looking at the other side of it being like, well, what can we do to solve it? So. Storytelling is what Free Soil does, and amplifying stories that are often underexplored is what we do. So um, Free Soil applied for a grant. And then when I really got a good sense of like what the scope of the project could be, I'm like, I can't do these interviews alone. And let's be real, Lowell is a place where if you're not from here, it can sometimes deter people. Mm -hmm. um, we just have that kind of culture, I think. It's a beautiful thing, but it's also just a complicated thing. And I knew that I don't think it was right for me to do all the interviews by myself. And also knowing Masada both personally and professionally, I think it was important to have somebody who's from this community that knows people that, you know, I would never be able to find on my own anyway. So I think together we interviewed close to 30 people. Um, yeah, and it's been a really great, really great process. It has. Yeah. I've loved it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think what, what fascinates me about it is being somebody who knows a lot about Lowell history and works at the Center for Lowell History a lot, how much of what you are uncovering isn't in there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that <laughs> it, it's a, yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a reflection on historians, it's a reflection on, I think, the park, mm -hmm. the city, the Lowell Historic Board, I mean, call people out in yeah. terms of, okay, if you don't like me, that's okay. Um, we've not done a good job, and I, I'm, I'm teaching a history class now, and I gave everybody a paper to read that talks about what does it mean if you're missing from an archive. Mm. Um, and so we're going to be talking about that in a couple of weeks in class. And I gave it to them yesterday, Thursday, and said, you need to really think about what does it mean if your story is just, yeah. you know you've been here. Right. You know there's footprints. You know there's ancestral footprints. Mm -hmm. But you just disappeared. Mm. And so it seems like that's what you're both, mm. and you as well, because mm -hmm. you're, you're involved in this too. Um, all of you collectively sort of like what um, so I guess yeah my question is like did was that something that bothered did you like is that something that was always in your brains like where the hell are we um, that has always bothered me I think being a Lowell native um, and feeling like I grew up being so starved for blackness and not being able to find myself in many places and um, I would say, especially growing up in the, in the projects, I knew that Lowell was comprised of many um, non-white people. Um, and then when we went to going to Lowell High School, I felt like I had a culture shock because um, I didn't know that what, like that many white people lived in Lowell. You know, so I feel like my world has always been very different um, in that I've gotten to experience many different cultures, but never really rooted in black culture. And I am very grateful for um, the black families that have tried to preserve, you know, blackness in the city. Um, but it's always been a struggle to find our stories specifically. I think that they have not really been told. And then as the, the older that I've gotten and been able to speak to elders because of this project and because of my own curiosity, um, I've been able to hold that and share it with pl plenty of people that have been like, I had no idea that was a thing. Mm -hmm. um, and how, much, how important it is to make sure that we tell other people. I think that things happen in the city, like I can, we've been able to see that in the 90s. Um, there was a particular project, I can't remember what it, what it was, but it was something that we had talked about and we highlighted. But it was something that happened in the 90s that I was like, how are more people going to know that this has happened? So that I love that Krista's like, we need to put a play on, we need to have a book so that this is living. Mm. Um, because I think that a lot of times it's like, oh, that happened at a festival one time. 
that happened that like you know what i mean like oh we had this people came like you know learning about that we had a um a baseball team mm-hmm. you know things like that that i'm like where are the stories mm-hmm. where where does this live mm-hmm. first black professional basketball player mm-hmm. from Lula. so many things that i'm like how like and I, I hear these because of like i know the families that are tied to this you know but otherwise it's just what mm-hmm. happens when people pass away mm-hmm. and all of this information is living with people mm-hmm. like it's just such an individual level thing um and it's not it's not okay mm-hmm. i mean i say the same like one of my first jobs in lowell was working as a museum teacher at the Songus industrial history center mm-hmm. and heavy on the mill girl experience heavy on the 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 journey of immigration there's like a whole mock ellis island <laughs> magic yep. yes. and there's no mention of, of you know black people who lived here by choice and the contributions that they made while they were here. Mm-hmm. So same thing as Masada, like we can't, I think it's also the issue that I see with some of those institutions that you mentioned is that sometimes I feel like the history just lives with people. Like mm-hmm. I count y'all two as like ma- nice gatekeepers, but if we weren't people people, if I didn't know enough to like strike up a conversation with you, where do we find all this stuff? Mm-hmm. And it's just, it's exhaustive and it's exhausting. Like we would touch base every so often it just on the status of stories and like to hear about like the black baseball teams, to hear about the black scholarship pageants, mm-hmm. to hear about the first black teacher in the Lowell school system, to hear about Bertie Malbury post Lowell. Like mm-hmm. it just goes pume and like we're excited by it, but the public needs to know. And I think after that, there's another step that needs to happen, which is the kind of making some of this archived archived <laughs> like we need to be in the archive permanent yes right. yeah mm-hmm. yes i know like and it's the thing that we've done on the show like w- our first episode mm-hmm. was supposed to be about black history but it was really about the stories of how white folks helped black people and the mm-hmm. Ray mm-hmm. and um the underground railroad and all of that and that's really what a lot of our history even focuses on is mm-hmm. the 19th century when we go through, we talk about the different immigrant groups, but we don't talk about the black folks who were already living mm-hmm. here and who were free, mm-hmm. right? Right. And those stories do need to be told. And then in our recent history, and so much of, I would like to know, a, like something <laughs> <Okay>. that, <laughs> anything that has popped out to you in these stories that have been like, wow, yeah. I wish I would have known that. Like, I'm, mm. I'm curious mm. and mm. feel free to ponder. Yeah, I will say I got to, I had the pleasure of speaking with um, James Mitchell mm. and he gave me so much information <laughs> um, that I was like, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> so he had shared that, he's the one that shared that we had um, the, the baseball, black baseball team. Also, we had a black owned um, restaurant that was called Soul Kitchen. Mm. Uh, we had a black convenience store. Um, he told me that my grandma, um, her name is uh, Beatrice Jones, is um, was a um, person that worked at the museum as well. Like what Chris's first job here was, where I was like, shut the front door, <laughs> shut the front door. Um, but he just he's like a wealth of knowledge that he got to share. Um, he had done a does a lot in the city um, that I just didn't know about. Like I just like the city is like he talked about like how the city changed. Like where there was like a um, a youth center here. There were like I was like where the park is. Like, <laughs> just, like I was just like blown away. Like I was I felt so 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 grateful to be able to speak to him. Mm. Super grateful. Um, and um, do, um, Dorothy Harding was another person that I spoke to who shared a lot of things um, just about my family that I just didn't know as well. That I was like wait. Mm. Wow. Yeah, because we don't we don't always tell our stories because so much is wrapped up into trauma, mm. you know. So I, again, I I feel so so grateful that I was able to participate in this um, in this interview process mm. because like Krista brought me on and I'm I'm just very grateful because I was like, wait, what? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And we would when she would tell me stuff like we would just be on the Zoom like, like there are times we just cry like <laughs> we're like wait. Heavy. How do we not know this? Heavy. And it's a, it's a joy. It's literally a joy and a sadness at the mm. same time. Mm. Um, I think for me, I, I was able to speak with Bertie Malbury's daughter. Wow. And Bertie Malbury was the first black woman to run for city council here in Lowell. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And we know she did not win. I believe she ran three times. Her office, people throw stuff at it, set it on fire, all mm. this stuff. And she just kept bouncing back. She moved to Atlanta, Georgia after that. Mm -hmm. I don't know how soon after, but Mm -hmm. her daughter talked about how loved her, like 
raspy voice, like she smoked cigarettes and was mm -hmm. like, yeah, birdie. Like it was just, <laughs> but she said that Atlanta embraced her. Mm -hmm. They had a birdie Malbury day. Wow. She got wrapped up in advocacy everywhere she was. I think she was in Jacksonville, Florida mm -hmm. first, then Lowell, right. then Atlanta. Mm -hmm. Oh, stop it. You're what's, sorry. what's her daughter's name? Um, ooh, ooh, it's with an I, I think it's Ingrid. Mm -hmm. And um, she just went on and on and on about how her mom had always been involved in just making the world a better place and like could talk to anybody and how, you know, she went through what she went through with Lowell, but how Atlanta like really raised her and like appreciated her. And I just mm. felt so awkward on the phone because of course, like I didn't do it, but I felt right. guilty. Yeah, that's, like, that's sad. It's awful. Um, and to know that like, we still have yet to publicly, you know, recognize her, mm. I think formally. Um, that was really touching. I talked to Enid Rocha, who I believe is the, was the first black teacher in the Lowell Public School System. Mm. And um, she has all of, the, all of these like books of photos. And I went to her home in Chelmsford and she talked about how, she just showed me the pictures very, and this, I don't know if you saw this, but folks that I found were older, like their nineties, were very just matter of fact. There was mm -hmm. no like, racism it was just yep and that's the letter when i was denied being a teacher because of my color okay and then mm. like it was just very and i believe that was in another state before lowell mm. and i caught myself as an interviewer like almost pushing for things mm. like tell me the drama and she was just like <laughs> what it is what it, it, is. Is, what yeah. it is it was the, she's like it was the 80s mm -hmm. she said that all, it was the 80s wow um and we don't yeah. think when you say it was the 80s if you grew up in Massachusetts, which I did, white, obviously, mm -hmm. the 80s didn't strike me as whatever, right? Mm -hmm. There was, I, I, that, not, that wasn't what I saw, that wasn't what I mm. came up against. Right, yeah. Um, and so what you're uncovering is really, I mean, it's just so important to try to, and then to try to figure out how we actually get it archived and preserved mm -hmm. and mm -hmm maintained and added to because I think again it will if it, it would be easy for it I know I, I know between the three of you you're not going to let it slip away but it would be easy to sort of have it mm -hmm. again be marginal well we've done that right and so people could it's like with the signage that's yeah. around town well we've done that mm -hmm. um, so let's just move, you know let's move along nothing to see here but what you're really trying to do is add to the you're trying to add, I feel like it's trying to add to the actual real story of the city, mm -hmm. not some literally whitewashed mm -hmm. version of the city. Mm -hmm. Cause, uh, yeah, because it's not, our story is not, it's not simple. It's not like we could have like, a, I don't know. I think our background, being black is just so nuanced. Like it's not, slavery is but a piece. These mm -hmm. stories are but a piece. And even when this is done, we still haven't covered everything. Mm -hmm. Like the displacement, the, the huge, these black neighborhoods that were completely just like decimated. Mm -hmm. This project could go deeper. It could go for the rest of our lives. It, it really could. I've shown people the photographs from Hale Howard mm -hmm. that show how integrated that neighborhood was. Yeah. And they'll generally, if they don't know the story at all, they'll generally say, that's not in Lowell, is it? Wow. Mm -hmm. Right when they look at the the kids mm -hmm. like playing and whatnot, and they say, "Yeah, that's that's over where the train station is now. Right. That got taken off the face of the earth. Mm -hmm. I wonder why. I mean, mm -hmm. back central, which you mentioned earlier, the area uh, just as you sort of cross central into Gorham, mm -hmm. where that plaza is on the left, as yeah. you're like leaving out to go to the connector, that was the historic black neighborhood, and there's mm -hmm. no marker, there's nothing there. Yep. Um, that was all taken down in preparation for the connector, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but that was where free blacks um, and fugitives lived mm -hmm. in the 19th, in the early part of the 19th century. You go over there now, there's a telephone store and there's a gym, I think, mm -hmm. and a bank mm -hmm. and some other stuff, but there's nothing that says to people, mm -hmm. we were here's, here. here's what was here. Mm -hmm. um, same with the train station. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I think of this project, and I'm so grateful that you all are doing this, but it, like you were saying, it was, it's sad. Mm -hmm. It's it's a little bit, like there's a mourning process as yeah. like I listened to some, I know you, like you've sent me some pictures that you mm -hmm. found, like we've talked about some of the stories that you've uncovered, but I think about how many stories have been lost mm -hmm. um, because of that bulldozing, <clears throat> right? Because of that just 
the decimation of neighborhoods and whole families displaced and mm -hmm. people that we just will never know mm -hmm. and how they contributed to Lowell, like Birdie mm -hmm. having to leave and right. being honored in a completely different place so far away and people not even knowing about her until what this year mm -hmm. this past mm -hmm. year we're like only because of this work that you're doing mm -hmm. so yeah. you know it, it and, and at a time where we're taking critical race theory out of schools and where people are trying to continue to whitewash history right mm -hmm. and it, it's more important than ever that you all are doing this work and mm -hmm. I'm, I'm grateful to know you and be even the smallest bit a part of it and it is the work of a lifetime and i mm -hmm. i don't know like for me i'm like hmm is this is this the work that we will do for our lives mm -hmm. <laughs> you know like mm -hmm. tell me about the you said when we started you said a book yes mm -hmm. and a play yes so tell me. I got a very loud. Yes. A little, <laughs> so a, I will. A, a little more. <laughs> yes. I will shout out Masada in this that she connected us with a local publishing company, mm -hmm. Bootstrap Press. Um, so they are working with us on. Let me backtrack a little bit. So the process is actually very extensive because Masada and I've been interviewing people. Sometimes the chat was thirty minutes. Sometimes it was an hour and a half. Mm -hmm. Yep. Black people are chatty. <laughs> and. We now are working with a copy editor who so you is have to transcribe it all. All of it's it. A lot of work. And find <laughs> find like, even though we have this kind of overarching theme that I think we ha is displacement. Mm -hmm. It's like, well, where does that story fit? Where does that story fit? So somebody is editing all of the stories as I speak, mm -hmm. um, and then after that, it's off to the it's off to the printer. Um, we're partnering with Henry Marte to do headshot photography for our, all the folks, and. Um, we're going to have the exhibit at the National Park Visitor Center. And the first day is going to be a private event for just the storytellers. Mm -hmm. And then it'll be open to the public. Mm -hmm. And then the process of turning it into a play is a lot. So right, <laughs> right now it's just, um, and it's funny because the book is still in, the, in process, but it's like, what do we want the play to look like? Like how many actors? One actor? Mm -hmm. Five actors? Do you want real people portrayed on stage? Do you want it to kind of be these composite characters that represent, you know, times? And so it's a lot of stuff to just think about. Um, and then we hire a playwright and work in partnership with them. Wow. And then it kind of becomes bigger than us, you know? It's, it's scary. Amen. I was gonna sing from Dream Girls. Yes, bigger than us. <laughs> and then my dream mm. is that this, that work will live it will maybe go to other communities that have the same issue that we're having, mm. and people will see how Lowell used art mm. to change yeah. history. So you spark other communities to sort of interrogate their own stories. Oh mm. yeah, because you know, because this has probably happened next door. Mm -hmm. It's probably happening everywhere. Yeah. Sure. Everywhere. Oh, my heart is beating so fast. It's like a lull renaissance, if you will. Hey. <laughs> hey. Imagine, though, like, what could happen if these stories get out? What could mm. happen if people start interrogating themselves? Mm. What could happen to even our city? How could our city change because of this, making this information? Mm -hmm. You know, that has been hidden in plain sight. Oh, well, hey, hey, hey. <laughs> I think that, that those are great questions to ask, because like one of the questions that we asked during the in, the interview is like, what is the legacy of black people in Lowell? Mm -hmm. um, and it was a, like some of the answers were heartbreaking. Mm. You know, like there were so many people that left and mm -hmm. the fact that some folks were like, it got stifled. We could never like our legacy just like got cut short. Mm. Like, how sad is that? to still be living in this city, feeling like I'm going to likely have children here. Like, what is the Lowell that my, like, what is the Lowell that my children are inheriting? Mm. You know, like it, it's, so yes, those are all great questions to ask. Like, can we change this city? Mm. Mm. Well, in a way you can sort of see the, as, as the uncoverings that you're, mm. that you're all doing, get out there, right? The debate at the city council meeting about whether to have the signs or not yeah. was another sort of step in the process of, okay, how do we how do we take what's being found out and make it more more visible? I imagine teach at the university, for example, there being a lot more work. I don't think the university has ever done a really good job looking at its own history of how few mm -hmm. um, faculty of color there ever have historically been and how long it took to actually have 
a significant number of African American students, how little the university in the 70s and 80s actually tried to pull kids from Lowell mm -hmm. and from Lowell High, students of color to actually come to the university. The university itself has a lot of reckoning, I think, in the mm -hmm. in the stories that you're telling. And mm -hmm. so there's a there's your PhD, there's your dissertation. Okay. Um, but, but anyway, I mean, I think that there's like that's a whole other sort of uncovering. I found an old yearbook with photographs of the first black faculty mm. at, at UMass Lowell, and the first person that was there was a, a singular person. Mm -hmm. mm. And, and she was arguing right. about hiring and being marginalized mm -hmm. because she was a, she, yeah. a, wo a black woman trying to transform mm -hmm. the university. Mm -hmm. And then we're getting um, called angry, right? Because we mm -hmm. have to like bring up these things. Mm. Oh, they're so angry. <laughs> Just stay over here, please. <laughs> right. Dear I was dear. like, really? <laughs> Drawing attention to this major thing? Mm. Mm. It's like that infantilization <sighs> of people of color mm. where you should just be seen. And right, mm. right. Mm. And not even really seen. Mm. We would rather have you in the back. Exactly. Like, mm. is, that, is that a black person? Right. Because mm. like, <laughs> the fact that we, I mean, the fact that we have to apply for grants and do projects and make motions for our stories of our livelihood to be mm -hmm. archived. That's right. the word of the day. Mm -hmm. There Again, it is like, we live in a country, I guess, where we can do that, but also it's like, we're not historians. Right. We're not historians. <laughs> like, yes. we, are, we are literally like doing this grassroots, like storytelling mm -hmm. and using our efforts to push, but like, these interviews are, are difficult, they're taxing. Like, it, not every talk is this magical, like, tell me about Lowell. Right. Sometimes it's, it's heavy and mm -hmm. you have to sit there and take mm -hmm. it and listen and it's gut, like we probably have cried on all of them. Mm -hmm. Like finding out like the family of, finding out Brian Chapman, his whole fa second black family in Centerville. Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, tell me about that. How was that? And you're asking people to like, go back in time mm. to remember, you're pushing for all the specifics that you can, like, mm. um, it's like, it's, I can't explain it. For anyone mm. who like applauds the project, like, oh my God, it's so great, great, great. Like, I understand that. I also want people to understand there's a level of, um, huh, what's the word? There's like just a level of mm. pain yeah. to literally make this happen. It was a labor happen. of love and pain. Like, yeah. Was, mm -hmm. Some yeah. trauma maybe. Yeah, for sure. Unfortunately, some people didn't want to be interviewed. Like, no, no, uh -huh. everybody wants yeah. to. Not, no, not <laughs> no, a lot of people wanted to relive that. Mm -mm. No, thanks. Yeah. Or like, I, I left. Like, Lowell in the 70s, like, there, were, I've heard that there was, like, plenty of race wars. Yeah. Yeah, you know, but I'm like, this is, there's a lot of history here. Mm. Well, all the, again, the, dislo the dislocations. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The Hale Howard, Julian yep. Steele housing. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. many times people were, had their lives disrupted, and I don't think... It's like, it's also thinking, again, teaching about immigration and teaching about movement. Mm. My students sometimes think Africans coming in slavery are immigrants. Mm -hmm. And I have to, I say, like, wait, time out. Like, let's think about when people get to choose mm. to move and where they choose to move and what's the difference between the two. And then also now in Lowell, displacement, right? Mm -hmm. The whole area around, again, around the university, the whole area of the acre, mm -hmm. where where people, where those neighborhoods, people are being pushed out, mm -hmm. the train station, mm -hmm. right? All these, and right, I mean, I don't, I don't know why people would want to talk. You have to be good talkers mm -hmm. to get people to, you both right. have to be good talkers, mm -hmm. the three of you, to get people to talk about that, because mm -hmm. I can't imagine anything more painful than uprooting yourself mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. when you're not ready. To, I mean, when you want to go, whatever, but when you're being told, get out, mm. Right. Mm. either politely or not, mm -hmm. it's sort of, yeah, I mean. Or being made promises, right? We heard mm -hmm. about that as well. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, we were promised this thing yep. and that never came about. Mm. Wow. Mm. And that was Hale Howard. Mm -hmm. Everybody was told they were going to get housing and yep. once it was all torn down, sorry, mm -hmm. we we're going to go in a slightly mm -hmm. different direction. Mm -hmm. And at one city council meeting, one of the councilors, when they were debating that, said, if we put more housing over here, every black person um, in Boston is going to want to move to Lowell. Mm. Wow. So we can't put housing here. Wow, well, we could do that today because mm -hmm. I would like it if that happened. Just right. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, I think one of Masada's interviews, there was a quote, and I forget who it was, but said something like, when I was in 
when I lived at Hill Howard, it was almost like you didn't have to know anybody because mm -hmm. everyone, it was just this familial, like people mm -hmm. knew each other, mm -hmm. just neighborhood love. And the fact that, I don't know, then having that just stop. Mm -hmm. And to think about, it would make sense. Like if you'd lived through that, you probably left. Yeah. You probably mm -hmm. left Lowell. So the, yeah, you continue to be pushed out from yeah. Hill Howard, then you move to Bishop Markham, then you move to Shaughnessy, and then mm -hmm. Shaughnessy was deemed dilapidated. And mm -hmm. it's like, so where do you go? If you're black and Lowell, you move away? Or like, where do you find community? That's real. Like, we're so const like, constantly dispersed. And like, then it's like, why do black, what? Anytime a new person moves to Lowell, where are the black people at? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> like, I truly don't know. Let me get my it's phone, wait. Find us. Well, on yeah. Facebook, there's a group, like, no. It's mm -hmm. true. It's still an issue. Like, mm -hmm. it's still mm -hmm. like I wanted to leave Lowell the first couple years of me being. It was incredibly difficult, mm -hmm. and I feel as though, literally, like we're part. We're part of the black people in Lowell that I can that are like friends, friendly. Mm -hmm. There are not many other. There are not that many. I mean, it's weird. I feel like we're here. We're definitely here, obviously, mm -hmm. but. I think that community that I think maybe other populations may have it just more easier by just geography, mm -hmm. we have to work on it. Like mm -hmm. you have to establish something like the Kindred Project. Mm -hmm. You have to build an entity to build us together. You have to plan, you have to schedule. It's not, it's not organic the way it used to be. Mm -hmm. Or you go to church. Mm. It's, it's really hard to find community outside of church. Yeah, and then what do you do if you're not religious exactly. or mm -hmm. whatever the case is? Okay. Um, wow, this has been, it's been so wonderful, it's been so heavy, it's been so emotional, because I definitely almost cried a couple of times, um, but I also want to just acknowledge the missions of both the Kindred Project and the Free Soil Arts Collective, and that you both are, I think, working towards that mission, those missions with this project, uh, creating visible community with black folks in Lowell uplifting the stories of marginalized folks and people of color in the Merrimack Valley. I don't know exactly what your mission is, but is that like, <laughs> did I say right? Uh-huh, yes. uh-huh, uh -huh. <laughs> Like, I don't know what it, verbatim is what I mean. Oh, you're good, um, it was good. Cool, 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 cool. <laughs> um, but this is, this is why now you all are the legacy of Black Lowell. You all are making Lowell more, hopefully, I think, hospitable and uh, welcoming to black folks. And hopefully we can continue being intentional about the community that we build. And hopefully this project will take off and change the world. I would like to hope so. And I know it's gonna inform my work going forward because as we all know, it also goes back to school. <laughs> but when the book comes out, definitely you all need to come back. Yeah. Yes. Oh yeah. So we can have it like up on a little oh, stand yeah. right there. and. Talk about the people inside. Yeah. Yes. That'd be good. Mm -hmm. That'd be really good. Thank you all for this incredible work you're doing. And thank you for being on History and Wall. And thank you all for tuning in.